grace and peace to our Mountaintop family and our E-Church family and friends around the world. I will give thanks unto the Lord for He is good and His mercy endures forever. We're so excited to be back with you again on tonight. I pray that you had a comfortable and a safe week thus far. And I pray also that you take a moment and share this message with someone. Let's go ahead and extend this gospel out to the world. You're going to be my extension to help me spread the gospel by clicking the button and tell someone, get on, listen, our pastor's on, the teacher is on. We're trying to expand this word to lift and encourage and to build someone's heart. And you have an opportunity now to share this with them. Please, let's pray before we get started on tonight. Father, we bless you and we thank you for allowing us to come again into these wonderful homes and through these devices across the country and this medium of social media and the platforms you've given us to spread the gospel. I pray that this message transcends the airways, that it gives life to we, your people. It strengthens, heal, save, and deliver in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. We love you. And I want to get started into the word of God tonight. I hope that you tracked with us on last week. We're going to pick back up that same scripture as we move a little more into our lesson. Our theme for the month of April is let go of yesterday and take on today. Let go of yesterday and take on today. Tonight, we move a little further, but let's lay a foundation scripture so we can get started. I want to go back to Isaiah 43 and particular verse 19 in the Christian Standard Bible. And he tells them again, look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the deserts are in the desert. It is God's people that he's speaking to, spiritual Israel we are. And Isaiah is giving them words of comfort and encouragement that God is making a way. Even in wilderness, rivers shall come forth in the desert. I'd like to draw our attention tonight as we bounce from that scripture that speaks to us in Isaiah also 42 and 9 about, behold, God will do a new thing. He also says it here. And it's in that new thing that we want to bring our minds to again. And letting go of yesterday and taking on, to take on today, to let go of yesterday and take on today. Let's look at the book of Hosea. It's in the Old Testament. It's those little small books right before you in the Old Testament writings. Hosea, Amos, on in there. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Hosea. The first chapter, and I'm going to build out of this chapter tonight, verse 2 down to verse 11. So just kind of track with me, and you'll see how the new thing will be seen and how letting go, let go of yesterday and take on today. How we let go of yesterday to take on today. So in Isaiah 1, 2 through 11. I'm going to paraphrase into the context and I'll read some of the texts of scriptures in a moment. Hosea here is our main character. His name, one of the main characters, I'm sorry. His name means salvation. Hosea is one of the minor, first of the minor prophets. And he also is a contemporary of Isaiah. He was around in the same time. You'll see that he was paired with Isaiah. That's why we picked him in our lessons for this month, a part of our lessons for this month. Hosea here was told by God, was instructed by him to marry a a girl named Gomar. Gomar. She is the text of shown us and will show us is an unfaithful wife, a typical of Israel's uh, idolatrous adultery. Here is this woman, she is treacherous, she's unfaithful, Israel, and as their sins where she was transgressing against God. Later we shall see how Hosea and Gomar would have children and they would have babies. And birthing babies don't mean that you are that successful unless you can take care of them. But I wanted you to see how she is birthing children but having no relationship with God. But God is doing a new thing. He can take a mess 
and turn it into a masterpiece. Oh God, you're gonna be you're gonna be walking tonight. He can take you in your most debilitating state and raise you up to be an amazing child of God. Don't count yourself out yet. Let God do the counting. In the Bible I read says not only does he count, he's the author and finisher of our of our faith. God loves as hate as Hosea did. He loves and he brings this woman back to himself. Brings her back by love and he draws her, which is the theme throughout this first chapter and portions of the book. Hosea, the first chapter in verse two, I, I can feel your interest tonight. I can feel you leaning into where is he going with this? Let go of yesterday and take on today. Mm -hmm. In verse 2 of Hosea 1, when the Lord began to speak to Hosea, the Lord said to him, go and take yourself a wife of harlotry and the children of harlotry. For the Lord has committed, for, for the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. Verse 3 of Hosea 1. So he went and took Gomar, the daughter of Debel, and she conceived and bore his son. Then the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel. For in, all, for, for, for in a little while, I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. Let's stop there for tonight in those three verses of two three and four of Hosea one. It has this woman, she's of holotry or she's unfaithful. And before you run your mind to everyone, every woman that you think that you might know that is a prostitute, uh, see this in a spiritual dynamics of our own unfaithfulness to God. Does that make us then a prostitute? It makes us unfaithful. We, we are loving something else than loving God. I think a few days ago we had Dr. Pierce with us and he really wrecked our minds again about putting the Lord first and he should be number one in our lives or he built our minds up again. Harlotry is just unfaithfulness and Gomar had a history and a lifestyle but she was not going to live in her past when she had she had a future she could take on. We see in this text, all these scriptures also, that the land has committed great idolatry by departing from the Lord. The whole land, the whole city, everyone had left the Lord. I want to submit this to someone tonight that may have tuned in just for a second since you may not be on for the whole message. Anytime you walk away from God, you can expect to be in a bad place. Anytime you walk away from God or you do not acknowledge him in all your ways, you can expect to be in a bad place. But as you come back to him, he welcomes us back and come back with a repentant heart. He forgives us and restores us back into his love. The place called Jezreel means God scatters. Our God souls. Jezreel was named the place that Jehu killed 70 prophets of the sons of, of Ahab, a place that was scattered. Jezreel was also known by, by some, by, by writers, that God is bringing an end to the whole dynasty of Israel. Jezreel, it happened there. God scattered, pulled them down. The northern kingdom of captivity of Samaria, Samaria fell in 7200 B.C. God ended it. But as they repented and came back to God, our God led them to repentance. Judah was the one that God, and Israel, Judah particularly, that God allowed to come back into fellowship with him. The other kingdoms other than Benjamin fell apart, never made it back. I want to talk to someone who is dealing with the God of the second chance, the God of the 750 and $60,000 $60, chance 
on and on and on. He's a God of restoration. He's not giving up on you, even sometimes when you give up on yourself. But you have to come back to him. Let go of yesterday and take on today. Repentance is good. Romans 2 and 8 says that, that this, don't despise the riches of his goodness or the forbearance, a long suffering, not knowing that it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Aren't you glad that little click comes on in your mind every now and then? The Lord is saying, don't do that. Don't go there. Stop. You're gone too far. Shut up. You stayed too long. Leave while you can. That's the check of the Holy Spirit. And thank God that he's still working in our lives. You can't see that it's the kindness of God. Or can you see that it's the kindness of God that turns you away from sin? Pastor House, I just keep making mistakes. I keep keep messing up. I keep saying stuff. I keep keep going off on people. Yes, but don't give up yet. It will decrease. And God will bring you to the place that no one pushes your buttons. No one makes you move like that. If you can move like that so quickly in the carnal, then move like that in the spiritual. Just stay consistent with God. Romans, Paul said, it's God's goodness, Israel, that leads you back to repentance. Hosea 2 and verse 5, it says, It shall come to pass in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Jezreel scattered God's souls. Seeds scattered. Go back and pick up a little bit of the first lesson that we gave you. Springtime. Sprouting up. Breaking of the bow symbolizes Israel military power will be broken. God has to sometimes reduce your strength, Jacob, so you'll know that it's not your power wrestling here. It's God's power that's giving you the strength to overpower your human self. He breaks that bow, diminishes their power, and now they're weakened. See God working, doing new things. As he diminishes Israel, as he scatters us sometimes and not know what we're doing, but yet he has a plan in the midst of that. Let me read on and I'll set it up more. Verse 6 of Hosea 1. And she conceived again and bore a daughter. I'm sorry, I went too fast. The first child was named Jezreel. Here, Gomar and Hosea had a child. Jezreel means scattered. She goes again and bears another child in Hosea 1 and 6. And this is a daughter. And her name is La Rama, which means no mercy, indicating a lifting up of God's compassion. I don't know how you feel about it. I may not have a lot of friends, but I want Jesus to be my friend. I want his lamentation compassion that I see his mercies renewed every morning and his great faithfulness. But Israel got so far away from God, he lifted up his compassion through the birthing of La Rama, birthed this child and named the child La Rama, no mercy. Here we see God's picture of Israel, who have been scattered, broken of strength, and no mercy, and no compassion. And now they're in the wilderness, a wasted land, uninhabited of human beings, where there's other than themselves and full of beasts. Hosea 7, first chapter, verse 7. Watch how God shifts Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. I need to put a Judah praise on it right there. Judah means praise. Something about a praiser, and I'm not trying to amp the emotions of praise, but never lose your Judah, which is also the crouching lion. I will have mercy on the house of Judah. Hosea 1, 7. I will save them by the Lord their God. Here he comes again. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to save you. Or save them by the Lord their God. Adonai. Yahweh. Elohim. The self-existing God. And I will not save them by bow. Not by your power. 
nor by sword, not by your might, or battle, or your horses, or your guns, or your rock wilders, or your bull mastins, or whatever you got guarding you, or the alarm that's on your house, or the security within your gate area. I'm not saving you by that. Oh, God. I'm saving you by the Lord, your God. He's a savior. He's a keeper. And he shows mercy to the house of Judah. Don't let anyone ever take your praise. Don't ever let them make you feel you, you're not safe enough to praise God. You just go on and be sister and brother Bartimaeus and say, I'm going to holler because Jesus is in town. He cried. You know the story of Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. He cried and said, Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. Judah is the southern kingdom still mentioned here. They were worshiping God, but others had turned away from the Lord. God always have a Judah worshiper somewhere. So God says, I'm going to save them. I'm their Lord. I'm going to save them. The word of the Lord comes, give us hope as it did for them. It gives us hope. Yet giving the people of God this understanding that God is in the market of saving, even in the time of wilderness and despair, God is still moving. May I encourage someone tonight? Let me encourage you with this tonight. <clears throat> no matter how dark or cold it is, no matter what wilderness you're moving through, on the mountaintop or in the valley, whatever you're facing, whatever you're put up against, God remembers Judah. Keep your praise up. Put that in the chat for me tonight. Tell somebody, keep your praise up. Somebody make it a t-shirt. I believe God, keep your praise up. Your praise shifts things and God dwells in the midst of praise. Let go of yesterday and let's take on today. Keep your worship. Uh, watch God coming into your rescue. Verse 9 of Hosea 9. Hosea 1 and verse 9. Now when she, Gomar, had weaned La Rama. Hmm. She conceived and bore a son. Then God said, call his name La Ama, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. How sad the picture deepens and darkens. They're scattered. They're having no mercy. They're at a low place in the wilderness, having no compassion. Now the Lord says, I'm not going you're not going to be my people. This is saying that I don't have, God saying he doesn't want to have a relationship with someone that doesn't want to have a relationship with him. Shall I get into a marriage seminar tonight? No, next time. It's difficult trying to have a relationship with someone that does not want to have a relationship with you. Check out the story in my backdrop of my mind, Hosea and Gomar, Having babies, but no relationship. You can birth, but still be disconnected. Having life, but having no life. Producing life, but not producing relationship. Your relationship with God is between you and him. This relationship is reciprocal, and it's vertical and horizontal. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and thy neighbor as thyself. They had no relationship, not a people, indicates the ending of that relationship, broken relationships. Researchers study the couples for over 50 years, and they said the number one thing that breaks relationship is communication. Stay with me. I'm going to be a little lengthy in this, but hang with me. Researchers show the number one thing that destroys relationships is communication. That's the transmission between human beings. Communication is the process. It's a process, but it goes both ways. I think communication is sending and receiving message. It enhances as you have a better understanding, symbolizing the behavior of the person as you communicate. You have to see what the person is saying and what they're not saying. Some people are transparent in the communication. Some people are not. Israel, in their case, was not even open to talk with God. They went away from him. Communication is vital. 
with the Lord. Communication is vital with you and I with people all around us. Watch this. You can text, email, pick up the phone and call a person to better understand what are they trying to say. However, sometimes it's even best to be face to face with that person to see how we're communicating so we can have this relationship mended again. And even taking a mediator to go and see, hear what you're saying and what you're, they're saying so you can understand what's really going on so we can be back in relationship. You need sometimes a mediator. Hang with me. Watch it. When it comes to God, I saw this, this, this graph. I, I should have gave this to my production. Maybe we'll do it next week. I saw this graph. It's a wonderful graph, and it, and it speaks of us in communicating with God. Watch it. It starts here as man. He is praying through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, the intercessor, to God. Man, prayer, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ is the intercessor, our intercessor, yes, and it goes to God. That's communication, to build relationship. How often do you spend time with God? How often do you go through a devotion personally? How often do you spend time in prayer, not asking, but just worshiping who he is? Come on, work with me tonight. It takes this to keep that communication open. Let me break it down. How frustrated are you when people only call you when they need something? Mm -hmm. Always only pick up the phone when you're in need. And watch this. Building is not smoking right now. It's on fire. I mean, things are just falling apart and they blame you because you won't respond. Flip it back to God. He says, I'm always here for you. But can you just love on me sometime and appreciate me so we have relationships? And when you do call, I'm going to answer right away. Watch this, this graph again. Man, Holy Spirit, Christ, intercessor, God. Then it comes back. God, Jesus Christ, watch it, mediator, Holy Spirit, and the word. It comes back to us. Praises go up, blessings come down. But watch this. You pray, God heard you. Daniel, before you spoke, I heard you, and I'm going to come to your aid. Jesus Christ now is our mediator and also the Holy Spirit. That thing that you have inside of you, the spirit of the living God, speaks for us with groanings that cannot be uttered, interceding for us, teaching us how to pray. When we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit, that's why you speak in tongues. That's why you pray in the spirit. And the word of God, the gospel backs it up. It comes back to me. Then I walk it out. I work it out. Praise and faith and obedience. I thank God for this. The understanding that I need to make sure, we need to make sure our relationship in this season is tight with God. Ah, there it is. It's not a religion. <laughs> it's a relationship. Don't allow yourself to get into a mode of religion, coming to church and doing things and doing things, working in the parking lot, Calvary parking cars. I'm out there. Pastor, no, I'm out there. It's cold out here. It's hot out here. And listen, that's a ministry call. But before you did any of that, you came to Jesus. Don't ever lose sight of him. He is the main focus of your life. Yes, we serve. And yes, we are servants and kingdom servants. But your number one thing is to worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Love the Lord thy God, I'm sorry, and him only shall you serve. I think what I'm trying to say tonight is communication is very vital, and communication is something that we need. And every now and then we need to check our communication, check our communication. Make sure we do not allow a text to break relationship with family, with friends, with God, with the Lord. And you don't understand why the preacher preached that. He's talking about me. Listen, check your communication to make sure you're in tune with God. Make sure you clear up and clean up all your priorities. Do not let yourself set alone or be alone. School. Schooling before, school yourself before your communication is cut off. I'm sorry. Make sure you stay tied in and tapped in. Check yourself and go to understand, get to understand what am I really upset about? What am I being misunderstood about? Israel lost their communication with God as we lose our communication with loved ones and friends because we just don't take time to communicate. Let's go on. Hosea 1, verse 10. Yet the time will come when, is when Israel people will be like the sand. Israel people will be like the sands on the seashore. Too many to count. Then at that place where they were told, 
you are not my people, it will be said you are the children of the living God. Mercy kicks in again, but the time will come springing forward at the same place of scattering Jezreel. In verse 4 and 5 of Hosea 1, same place that you were scattered. I'm going to gather you again. God is speaking to Israel here, Judah and us, and says, I'm gathering the church back. At the same place they were scattered and they lost communication, they had no fellowship with me, I'm bringing them back. Bringing them back to one people, because I'm going to be one head. Jezreel is the land they were scattered in. I am completely understanding this messianic word in here that he is the one having one people, bringing them back unto himself. God that scatters is now gathering. The positive meaning here is that as God has God scattered, he also planted. As he planted, now that seed is coming back up. Pastor House, what you're talking about? You've gone through a desert experience. You've had some difficult times because of our actions away from God. But yet that seed of the Holy Spirit is still alive inside of you. It's been buried in a hard place. But God said, it's going to spring back up. If I hadn't put you through that, you would have never grown to be who you are. If I never had you go through that wilderness, you would not be grateful to be in this place of prosperity. But I took you where I needed to take you to bring you to where I'm bringing you right now. I didn't leave you in that place. Every plant, watch this, can't grow in the desert. What you have grown through and lived through and outlast, everybody couldn't go through that. Because you understood, I'm growing through this. God had a plan and purpose in it all. And he's made me not the worse, but the better. Taking deep roots, Colossians says, 2 and 7. I'm closing on this. Taking deep roots as these plants of God. It's growing up in him, growing up, growing up in him, being built up in him, that your faith may grow strong through truth that you have been taught, that you will overflow with thanksgiving and gratitude. Colossians 2 and 7, he's speaking about taking deep roots, the plantings of God saying, go deeper, letting go of yesterday and taking on today. Let your roots go down deeper in this hour. How deep shall they go? Psalms 93, I think 13 and 15. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish or thrive in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. Yes, they shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that God is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him planted in here. That's what God wanted to do, to check the roots and the tree of your life, to shake it till it finds itself knowing I'm planted by a river of water. Psalms 1 and 3, I shall not be moved. I'm here to stay. Psalms 1 and 3, blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Standeth in the seat of skinners, sinners, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law do they meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. Shout about that. God has done something unique for us. And this is our hour of springing forth. Our roots have tested us in the last few years. Our life has tested us and the wilderness have tested us in the last years. We have stood and we've stood the test of times. I'm trying to build you and I to understand God did not bring you through all of this to not have a blessing on the other side. And that miracle is this in our text. God is doing a new thing. Receive it tonight. Walk in that thing. Get your communication back in fellowship with him. Talk to him each morning. Expect the great in your life. Believe God again and trust him that his word will never fail. 
never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never, never fails. I feel somebody going in right now. Come on, come on, get it. Hold your hands up and just believe God. Trust him right there in your home. Tuning in in your device. Hear the word of the Lord. Let go of yesterday and take on today. Jesus never, never, never fails. Believe him, believe him, believe him. He's faithful, faithful to perform. Even when you don't believe it, believe to see it and you'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God bless you, beloved. So thank you for tuning in tonight and hearing the word of the Lord. I pray that it bless you and strengthen you once again. The best is yet to come. Bless now, my sister and my brothers. Let this word not return void, but accomplish, God, what you sent it to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my loved. Beloved, we'll see you real soon.